Three up, two across, tap that play button three times and walk through the archway into Dialogue Alley. Welcome to the podcast. Dialogue Alley is a show about Harry Potter books, book translations, and all other things magical. I am Melanie from the Harry Potter Collection on Instagram, and with me today is Eric from Nocturne Eric. I'm Eric. Hello. (gasps) Eric and I are actually video chatting today. It's so fun. We get to, like, chat as we record. It is it, it is fun. Although like we're not talking to each other, like when I just said hello to everyone and I'm looking at you and I'm like, that's kinda weird. Hi. Hello. Hello. We have already yes. said hello. Hi, hello. Nice to meet Hi you. Again. Shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can hear or assume, um, it is just the two of us today. Um, no Carly. She's uh, she's a busy little bee. So just just us hanging out and chatting. Yeah. But It'll be a fun episode because we are taking a look back at all of these questions that we have been getting because we haven't done a question episode in a really long time. So we're going to answer some of your questions. That's it. And we got some new ones too. Yeah. And new questions. Yeah. We put out some feelers today and tried to get some new questions. So we've got some new questions that are coming out as well. And... We also have some really cool news to talk about, so that'll be fun. Um, And then, as always, translation of the show. Still going to stick with our tots. Got to do it. Sticking with the tots. I love tots. Uh, What's better, besides, like, actual tots slash translation of the show, like, tots? Like, as in I feel like one of these times we should be eating tater tots while we talk about the tots. Although that yeah. would influence the smell of the book. So we'd have to wait till we finish smelling it and then like bring them out of like a Ziploc bag or something yeah. so that the odor doesn't interfere. Yeah. Or have like, you know how when you like smell perfumes and you go to like a store, have like little thing of coffee beans. Like we'll just have that as like a nasal deodorizer in between. Yeah, or like some orange sherbet or sorbet, if you're fancy. Yeah, you know, we have to cleanse our palates between eating tots and smelling the tots. Enough about amazing food. Let's talk about some amazing other stuff. Yeah, let's chat about the news. So, for the news... This week, we're recording on Monday, the 13th of December, 2021, and episode three was just out of the Harry Potter Hogwarts Tournament of Houses, and in this episode, which I did not watch, actually. Oh, so this is a spoiler. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm not in it to see who wins. I'm in it for the questions. I think that's really really it. Um, So uh, Slytherin... uh, beat Gryffindor and took a seat at the final. So I, I believe the, then Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw have to duke it out again no. to make it to the finals. No. no. Alas, Earwax, that is not the case. Oh, um, no. It's all three of them are going to be in the finals. And it seems as though the final episode <laughs> is going to be like a different style from the past three episodes. Like it, it looked that way. The preview kind of showed that they have to like buzz in to answer oh um, i like that so that's my jam i'm yeah, in for that yeah okay, so i'll tune into that one then. so it seems it seems very cool um i will say that the episode that just aired last night the questions were quite a bit more challenging like good one of the questions was when was tom riddle senior born what year I have zero idea D- but listen to the I choices the- listen to the choices yeah 1902 1903 okay. 1904 or 1905? I don't know. I'd guess 1904. I think that that was what we guessed, but I don't remember if it was 04 or 02. It ended up being the actual answer. But like, when crazy. When do they talk about that? Is that in book four? I imagine it's written on the gravestone in the fourth movie. In the movie? See, and that's... I think someone asked a question about this in our question bag that we're going to pull stuff out of. But like, I am just not good at the movies only because I haven't seen them. Yeah. Very many times. And I mean, I know a lot about the books because I've read them a bunch and I have a really good memory. So I feel like if I watched the movies a bunch, I'd probably 
know more. But like again, who's paying attention to that detail? Just like the couch, the Granger parents' couch. Well, another question was it was like another prop thing like that, except this it was um they showed four diadems and you had to pick out which one was the real diadem. And I got it instantly like that. Yeah. I actually figured it out right away. That's one I might know because people people buy that from the Noble Collection. Sure, but it was like it was kind of for me. It was kind of like a one of these is not like the other. Like it, yeah. And and the one that was correct like stood out to me a lot. Um, but oh. but there were like a lot of questions answered where the people were very like confident about their answers, and I was like, "Are you kidding? That is not correct." So I wonder why. This round is so much more was so much more difficult than the because first one. Just because it was so the first two episodes were like the preliminaries. So it was yeah, like, two and two. Right. This one was like the um the wild card round to see who was going to get into the finals. So oh. that's why I think it was like a bit harder. This was this so, was definitely I would say the questions were definitely a bit harder in this one. Okay. Oh, good. So maybe I'll go back and watch that one because I mean I only watched the first episode and I'm like no. Like no, the questions should. that were the hard questions in the first episode were unfairly hard. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was like a question when I read Catcher in the Rye in high school, and one of the questions on the comprehension chapter quiz was like, "What color was so and so's friend wearing on the bus?" I'm like, "That's not that has nothing to do with the plot of Catcher well, in the Rye." Well, that's like the color of the guy's shirt on the bus. I know that's like one no. of the questions in like the first episode was what. Roman numeral was the second one down on the skeleton candle. I'm like, you don't need to know about Harry Potter to answer that question. You just have to be observant. Like, that's stupid. Right. That, stupid. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could ask those questions about any movie. You're like, in Back to the Future Part 2, Marty McFly tied his shoes. Did he have white shoelaces, brown shoelaces, tan shoelaces, or yeah, green I, shoelaces? Yeah, exactly. Like, I know. I don't care. But, but I could tell you that he was wearing a red puffy vest. I know. But in general, I would say that the show is definitely getting, like, it's getting more entertaining and interesting to watch because I feel like the questions are getting harder. So I would go back. I would go back and try to yeah, watch Yeah, I it. think, so my wife and I should go back and watch that. We're watching Ted Lasso right now. So when we finish that, we'll uh, we'll go back and check that out, probably. Do it. Definitely do it. Nice. So, uh, again, that's on TBS and Cartoon Network. If you haven't watched this at all, you can find it streaming online, too, I believe. I think so. I think so, too. Um, at least you can if you're American. I don't know about other countries. Um, yeah, I am not sure. I'm pretty sure I'm, here that you can. I think you can. So if you're from another country and you're finding ways to watch this, like, legally, because we don't promote illegal streams here. But if you want to do that, that's your choice. Um, <laughs> wink, wink. Uh, let, let us know where you're watching it. <laughs> we oh, we just like the cheesiest wink right now. Oh, I know. That's great. It's good. You can see it. Uh, the other big news is that the trailer for Fantastic Beasts, colon, The Secrets of Dumbledore, it's out. That's huge news. It's out, baby. It's out there. It's huge news. It's huge news. Can we talk about it? We can because uh, I watched it. You you listened to me watch it. I know. I watched it because like three times already today and then you watched it and I listened to you watch it and yeah. took notes. Good. Well, you should have. I know. Um we put together a few bullet points to chat about quickly. So uh, the first one we wrote down is that Aberforth is looking dapper. I know. Well, it's Aberforth. <laughs> like, I'm so excited that he's going to be a character. And I feel like based on a lot of theories from the first two movies, they obviously needed to introduce his character, especially because of the Aurelius Dumbledore whole storyline yeah. and, and yeah. wondering what that's going to mean and where that's going to go. Obviously, Aberforth needed to get brought into the story so so cool that here he is so cool yeah and i'm wondering if he'll smile in this movie because i don't think he has in any other encounter i can't imagine he's that pleasant of a human even now because at this point i mean ariana's already gone so i imagine he's a grouch because of that like ariana was his person so i feel like yeah i'm just surprised that uh, I mean, they all look young, right? Dumbledore's looking looking fine too, right? He's he's got his cool little vest on oh, and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, Aberforth's already you know manning up the uh, the Hogshead. Yeah, looks that way. So like, I, that's kind of cool. Little mm-hmm. lore there that he didn't just like 
decide to do this as an old duffer, he's like, you know what? Going into the bar business. I know, maybe that was like his dream afterward was to Could just be. be a bar owner. Moving on to the rest of our bullet points. Yeah, what else is on the bullet points? Bunty point? is back. Bunty. It was, I feel like it was like such an uh, like a like uproar that like they introduced this character and her name was Bunty and she was gonna be Newt Scamander's assistant and then she's literally in the movie for like two seconds in Crimes of Grindelwald and now Bunty's back. Welcome back, Bunty. I'm I'm hoping and we talked about this when we talked about Crimes of Grindelwald before that. The more they add to this franchise, the better that movie will be. I 100% agree with that. You know, I, like, I am not counting Crimes of Grindelwald out, I, honestly. And I no. feel like that is what, anytime people are like ripping on Crimes of Grindelwald, I'm like, I'm not counting it out. I think that Crimes of Grindelwald is the key movie that you're going to have to watch again and again. And you'll pick up more stuff watching yes. it after like watching the next movies that are going to be coming out. I agree. Um, and you know who else is back for the first time? So he's not really back. But guess who's here? <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen is here. Mads Mikkelsen! Uh, playing I'm stoked, man. I'm stoked. I love him. Like, I think he is an extremely talented actor. I agree. I completely agree. And he's Danish. Not like, um, if you care. Uh, I'm just like, I'm stoked about it because I feel like he is a great actor. I feel like people are so sour about everything going on with Johnny Depp that like he's not going to get the fair chance that he deserves. But I right. think that he is going to be absolutely brilliant. This could have been a casting choice from the first movie and everyone would have been very satisfied. Oh, I completely with agree. With the rule, right? I completely agree. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you that. You have to give it a chance. I feel like, listen, you know, unfortunately, we had to have two Dumbledores throughout the Harry Potter series. And that was a hard pill to swallow, especially for people that were not big Michael Gambon fans. And I'm not, but I didn't have a choice, but love his artistic differences. And I feel like we're going to see... Mads Mikkelsen bringing a whole new light to Grindelwald, and I'm really excited about it. Or a whole new dark to Grindelwald. <laughs> oh, I bet you're whoa! Right. I bet uh, you're right. <laughs> now this happened in Game of Thrones too. Like after season two or three, they changed out somebody that was with uh, Khaleesi. Yeah, Dario and, and Harris. I know. I wasn't and, happy about and it. And I was so confused. I was like, like, who is this guy? What happened to my well, long-haired Darren Harris? Honestly, like, that show, as amazing as it was, the first season and even the second season, I'm looking at family trees and I'm, like, looking at little pictures. I'm like, this is that person. They're the brother of that. But they're only half related and then they got cast out. And then they change actors of a character that, like, now has a more prominent role. And I'm like, who is that man with the ponytail? I know. Yeah, no more Darian Harris. I, I was so upset when oh, they switched him. him. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh. Or one of my favorites is um, they make, what's his face? Tummin. Like, the actor that plays Tummin, like, at the end. Like, the end of Tummin. Um, yeah. He... Also plays like a Lannister cousin, like earlier in the earlier seasons. He's one of the little Lannister cousins that gets killed by the Car Starks. But then yeah, well, he comes back as Tummin. Like, good for you, man. You must have been a really good actor that you got to you got killed. Or he was, and you get he was just back. really pleasant to be around on set. And they're like, you know, once he was gone, we just noticed this like big void. And we I needed know, you to- know what? I think Tummin's gonna grow up real quick. He's gonna be a king, so Let's uh, let's just you know let's just do a little boop, swip swap. Well, um, <laughs> some other things we should mention. There's a a new school teacher mentioned, a woman, and we don't know who she is. Well, her name, her character's name is Eulaly Hicks. Eulaly. But I mean, we don't know who that is. We have no idea who that is. But she's going to no. be a character, Eulaly. She is, and that's great. I'm a teacher. I love teachers. I know. I'm stoked about it. That'll be cool. All about teachers. Well, I mean, the whole movie is about a teacher, right? It's like the most epic teacher tale ever. I know. And his secrets. It's about Dumbledore, right? Um, You talk about the next one because I think you find it more giggly than I do. Jacob gets a wand, man. (laughs) 
<laughs> Jacob gets a wand. And here's the thing about it is my thought and what seems to be the overwhelming thoughts of the internet is that he is given this wand as like a decoy wand. It's not a real wand. It's probably just like a cool little piece of wood that looks real cool. Just so people think that he is a wizard because he's working with wizards. He is a muggle. He has no magical ability. But to kind of like help disguise himself a little bit, I think that he's got this cute little fake wand. Um, I'm behind that. that I think it's good. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and what else? Two two more things. Two more things. Two more things. Um, there's there's a great scene in the trailer where Newt and who who's who, who's with him? His can brother. You, can we tell his brother? Um. Well, they're in a dark cave, so I, you know, I've only yes. seen it once. Uh, they're doing some sort of weird, like little, little dance, crabby with dance, some other little little critters. Which I'm assuming that if Newt wasn't there, they wouldn't have known how to do that dance, and they probably would have gotten like bitten or stung a billion times. But no, they can do a little dance because Newt's there and he knows all about animals. So they do a little dance, but then a big stinger of some kind comes whapping at you from in this other little alcove. And if it was a 3D movie, like if this was 10 years ago, that thing would have come right at your face. Oh yeah. In the theater. Right. But that's not a thing anymore. Um, unless you have a 3D TV at home, which I think like 18 people do total in the country. Correct. Correct. So, um, and and only five of them have a 3D DVD Blu-ray player. So the other people are kind (laughs) of stuck. But anyway, um, Melanie was saying, Hey, I think that's a manticore. Uh, yeah, and then I pulled out my handy-dandy Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them book. Lo and behold, I think I'm correct. I'm pretty sure that that's a manticore. Crazy. Crazy. I think it's, like, a, a class five, like, magical creature. Like, so, 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 so dangerous. So that's going to be really cool to see. Yeah, it should be. And then the very last one is that um, they go in the Room of Requirement, which... So cool. Cool throwback. It's cool. And I don't know. Again, this goes back to like some things I don't like about the original eight movies is that did we – how much of the Room of Requirement did we really learn about? I mean we saw it in um, like all the scenes where they did the Dumbledore, Dumbledore's army and then they went mm. there in um, the last movie to, to get the diadem, right? But right. then – like, we don't really get as much background on that room as we do in the books. So it relied on kind of the books to be like, oh, this is this place. Well, this is awesome. So Yeah, and I feel like that's a missed thing in the movies that Dumbledore knew about the room. I feel like this yeah. is kind of like filling in the gap for the movie watchers that didn't know that Dumbledore knew about the room. Because he expresses at... The Yule Ball and Harry overhears him talking about a room like, oh, there was this room that just showed up that had a bunch of toilets in it. And I really needed the bathroom. It wasn't even a toilet. It was chamber pots. Someone had to empty them. (laughs) Ew. It was probably poor house elves. He must not have been thinking too clearly when he was walking past (laughs) it. Because it could have just been a real bathroom. I just need anything right now. (laughs) Anything. Just give me something. (laughs) I don't need a real bathroom with plumbing like the rest of the school has. delivered the most basic (laughs) And here you go. But he had, at least he had choices. I know. Crazy. But going back to the trailer, it looked like there was some sort of device in the room of requirement that um, seemed to allow them to apparate outside of Hogwarts. Like, that's what Yeah, this or like a port kind of key looked, type thing. Yeah, type. it looked like something um, something cool. When I, when I saw it, it looked more like the port key type thing because it was a yeah. physical object. However, Maybe. we know that that room can get you in and out of the school because it, it does so in the in the book sure. and the movie, I suppose. Well, but even in even in Deathly Hallows, like the reason why the passage from the Hogshead was created is because of the fact that you can't apparate into Hogwarts. So they right. needed the passageway to create itself. Well, the passageway also created itself because they needed food. And that created the passageway from it, and the room. Yeah, because you can't food. you can't uh, create food because of Gamp's law, right? Ding ding ding. That's. I hope that was a trivia question on the show. Because it, it wasn't, but good no. for you. Good for you. Thank you. Um. You know, I do have a master's degree. I mean, <laughs> in uh, in Harry Potter. in Gamp in Gamp's laws of <laughs> magical of, of elemental transfiguration. Elemental transfiguration. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, that's pretty good. So that's that's the trailer. I mean, if you haven't watched it yet, you can watch it anywhere that you can watch things like the YouTube. 
the YouTube. That's where I watched. That's where I watched it. Although, if you're on YouTube, don't search for YouTube, um, because you won't really get anything. No. No, Melanie <laughs> heard me do that, but I was also talking at the same time, and I was just typing YouTube, but I didn't realize I was already on YouTube. Yeah, it's okay. And, that happens. Uh, it's Things it happen. happens. Things happen. But I picked I picked my brain up off the floor and I put it back in my head. Well, that's good that you have your brain because we are about to answer some questions for our main segment. Oh, How's you're that take it over. How's that? Segway. Booyah. Segway bonanza. <laughs> We're answering questions. Pretty awesome. Um, we have a lot of questions to get to. And I feel like we spent a good time talking about the news because it's super exciting stuff. So let's answer some questions. Yeah. Well, some of these aren't like – some of these aren't lengthy questions. No, no, no. And they're they're fun questions. It's good stuff. Yeah, they're fun. I'm, I'm I like pumped. fun. Um, okay. So first question is, what languages do you guys speak and have you read any Harry Potter books in another language? Esperanto. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Looks funny. I speak English and I speak Spanish. My Spanish has gotten poorer the longer I have not used it around other adults um, after I lived in Mexico. But I do speak Spanish to my kids at school a lot. So I have read book one and I've read book three in Spanish. That's it. And they're hard. Let me tell you. And... Even my native Spanish-speaking friends tell me that they are difficult to read only because there are so many made-up words for that yeah. book that it is hard to read. And I, I mean, if, if you're a native Spanish speaker, you're going to have an easier time. But as a non-native speaker, it's hard to distinguish. Like a, when you read a word that's unknown, like you can use context clues to figure it out in English, right? And you can do that same thing in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So you can f try to figure out what it is. But if it's a made up word, you're like, you don't know, like, is, am I learning a real word? Am I learning a made up word? So that was that was kind of the frustration I had reading it in Spanish. But um, knowing it in English helped a lot. Like, you're like, oh, yeah. this is where they talk about the whatever. So, so that, that works. So that's it. Just English and Spanish. I don't speak anything else. So, yeah. Si quieres hablar conmigo en español, <laughs> I'm here. Um, I feel like this is a question we get a lot, considering the fact that we have the books in these translations, and everyone always asks, like, oh, well, do you speak these languages, or do you read these languages? Why do you have books in all of these languages? And my answer is no. Uh, I can't speak any other language other than English. Um, I can read Hebrew. That doesn't necessarily mean that I understand what I'm reading. Um, it's just a cool, fun fact that I can read a different script um but yeah i've only read the books in english that's it there there was a time that i got pretty good at reading the cyrillic alphabet and again like i didn't understand a single thing but like i could one word at a time sound about but that doesn't count all right next question uh the next question is what was the cheapest and most expensive book you guys bought um that's a really good question. Cheapest book. Probably my cheaper books are ones that aren't even translations. So like I I think I've mentioned this in the past too. Like I also collect um I'm looking at them. That's why I'm like looking this way. Yeah. I also collect I can, like I can see you looking at them. That, that's something we haven't had. It's, it's like an extra dimension. I know. Um so I also collect library editions of the books. Um which are super fun. Typically, they are like the size of a paperback, but they're hardcover because they're made to be more durable for libraries, which is really cool. I love them so much because they're like just very crazily loved books. Um, so those I actually get for really cheap. So those are probably like the cheapest books. Um, I will say as far as translations, cheapest, I will say... Maybe not cheapest, but maybe like best deal was my Urdu. My Urdu I mm -hmm. got for thirteen dollars on eBay. Thirteen dollars. Actually, Amazing. Urdu sticks out, and then also Dutch book five I got I think for like six dollars, and then saw them selling for significantly higher after I bought mine. So those were two really 
goodbyes. So you sold it and you bought a snow cone machine. No, they're like, they're like right there. Oh, boop, boop. oh okay. Oh yeah. Boop, boop. Oh, all right. They're there. They're on uh, on the mo- shelves. Most expensive for you? E- um. Are we saying prices? Or are we not saying? I'm not prices? gonna say prices. Um, I'm gonna say my first printing of Sorcerer's Stone was probably my m- most expensive that I bought. Um. That being said, and this is something that we all say, I feel like as collectors, I feel like we never buy books for more than what we could sell them for. Does that make sense? So like I makes total sense. So like if I have a book that is valued at a thousand dollars, I am not gonna spend a thousand dollars on the book. I'm gonna find a way to get it for cheaper. So even like Asturian or Gujarati or um Greenlandic, those books, um, I've definitely spent a lot on those books, but I know that they have increased in value since I've got them and I could probably sell them for double what I paid for them. Yeah, I I agree with that to an extent. I I feel like if you're if you're collecting to have a like a an end goal, like um, I know a couple people that are only like one or two books away, right? I mean, like if you want it, the price doesn't really affect it that much, if that makes sense. Yeah. But you're not going to pay some sort of outlandish number. Yeah, you might you might spend a little more than you would have if that was like your fourth book that you were getting, not your ninety fourth book. Yeah, um, but you could still sell it for about what you paid for it, if not a little more, because these they do appreciate in value because they're not in print anymore. So, um, I think my most expensive book was Greenlandic, ironically, because um, after I bought mine, I saw probably five, six, or seven sell for way cheaper than I paid for it, and. <laughs> Like, do I regret it? Not really, because at the time when that one came came across my uh, my screen, that was the only one that I had found. Yeah. So, like, the, it's it's hard to really like say, oh man, I could have gotten that for you know cheaper. But unless you're getting it for ten dollars, it's it, it all kind yeah. of evens out. I, I tell some people that are kind of sticker shocked by some of these prices, and you're like, you know what, you're gonna get a really good deal on something. And you might overpay a little bit on something else. So it all evens out. And if you, yeah. if your only goal is to collect it, to have it in your collection, the price doesn't really matter because you're not buying and reselling that book. If you're buying yeah. buying if you're buying it just to resell, yeah, you're you're gonna be more concerned about that. But if you're buying it to just have it, to complete your collection, um, then it doesn't matter as much. But again, like don't pay some sort of outlandish yeah, still do price research. for it. Yeah, do research. And then my cheapest book, I mean, I don't know which one, but there are some languages that you can just get on Amazon, whether it's yeah. Amazon US or Amazon uh, France, Amazon Germany, Amazon UK, Amazon Japan. Like, you can buy a lot of languages spoken in a lot of European countries, and you can pay maybe under 10 US dollars for it. Yeah. So I, I feel like cheapest, I mean, I've gotten. Uh, someone gave me a book for free. Brian sent me a free Italian new edition. Oh, right, right. I sent him a thing, and that was like the most wonderful surprise ever. And uh, Lena has sent me some, like a free book after I bought one from her. So um, I don't know if that necessarily counts because that's from another collector. But you can you can easily find books cheap sure. used if they're one of the main spoken languages still in print because there are tons of those copies available. Absolutely. I completely agree. So, yeah, cheapest – cheapest book i feel like is kind of uh hard to hard to gauge but anything under ten dollars i say is cheap yeah that's good i think that's good all right who would win at trivia between you me and carly bonus does harrison beat all of us i don't know it depends is it about books is it about the movies is it a hybrid Hybrid. Is it about hybrid. is it about Fantastic Beasts? No. Harry Potter trivia hybrid <sighs> movies books. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the scope of your knowledge. Because when we did that that one with with Harrison, like all of us didn't know all a of few the answers. Questions. That's true. But but the ones that we didn't know, someone else did know. That is true. Uh, I know. And this is, like, hard for me to say, especially, like, going back to that episode that we did with the trivia, because I feel like my reasoning as to why I didn't get the answers is just because I'm rusty. 
Like, I haven't done a full book reread in probably about a year, and um, it's because my husband keeps listening to all of my books on Audible. I'm going to, like, straight up blame him, and I just don't want to, like, mess him up when he's listening on my Audible to whatever book he's listening oh, yeah, to at sure. the time. Um, that being said, I feel like if I was, like, at my sharpest of my knowledge, I'm going to go ahead and say that I think that I could beat at least you and Carly. I don't know if I could beat Harrison, but I think that I could beat you and Carly. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know because (laughs) I listen to these books on a constant loop. I finish book seven and I start back over on book one. And I also remember absolutely everything to the point that it kind of creeps people out sometimes. So I don't know. I remember a lot. But again, there's also things like minor details that are not plot points that sometimes are questions in trivia that I would definitely not know. Yeah, I would say like I remember I went to LeakyCon like a few years ago and like their tr- we did their trivia and the questions were based on like video game, like Harry Potter video games that are all yeah. considered like some sort of canon in some universe somewhere. In my head, the only canon is those seven books like that is the canon is yep, those seven books yeah so, if you were if you were looking for a person to add to your trivia team for harry potter night i would be good on anything about any of the seven books right if it was about a movie if it was about a date of movies if it was about actors or like historical publication things yeah of the books, that like, i'm no, gonna be rusty nope, but like nope, not not at all but if you want like Plot points or details or, like, really random facts about anything from books one through seven, I will probably gotcha. know the answer. Anyway, our next question is, uh, what would you? What would be your dream Harry Potter book slash item to purchase for your collection? I mean, for me, it would be a first edition, first print of Philosopher's Stone hardcover. Like, if... Hardcover? Yep. Yeah, if, like, if money wasn't an issue or anything like that like that would be that that's like that's the book in my opinion it's a book that in my head i will absolutely never own i don't think i would ever even get to own a paperback as much as i would love to own a paperback um but that is like that is the the book that i wish I would yeah, I would agree. I mean, I think that is the book that Harry Potter fans would want to have, right? Um, I I think a more realistic goal for me, so like, I would like to have a Sorcerer's Stone first first, which again is very expensive if the person selling it knows what they have. Um, but I don't really care if I get it or not. Like, my collection was book one translations and I did it, so... Mm-hmm. I'm cool with that. And then I kind of moved on to the um, advanced reader copies for the three American books that they had. I don't know. I'd like to have a proof, like a UK proof. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I don't care which one. And I mean, I think I've told Carly this. I don't care the condition. If it's in the worst condition possible, the better for me because then I get to like page through it and look at it. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, what that's I want to cool. do with it. I don't want to sit and like look at it on the shelf. If it's like an uncorrected proof with maybe some plot points – not plot points. That'd be, <laughs> and then Harry went <laughs> to the, uh, he went to the uh, Lily White Sporting Goods store and bought a cricket bat because he didn't know what to expect. Like now nah, we should cut that out of the final version. I don't think it's gonna fly. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But uh. like to me, to me, those are books that I want to page through. Like a first, yeah. first. Like I wouldn't need to page through that. Like I know what's in there. You'd want to like put it in a vacuum sealed bag and put it in a safe and like yeah look at it once a year yeah but still like i would love i would love to have that i'd like to have like a nice book signed by joe i think i don't have one i just have the signed page which i like a lot too because i can frame it it's on my wall i can see the signature but Mm -hmm. i don't know i i think that's the first first hardcover i think is the dream for all yeah harry potter book fans 100 percent one hundred percent. Um, all right. What is one translation no longer being published that you wish you could get another printing? Like we would wish would like get reprinted, or you could get another printing of. Oh boy. Um. 
This is a hard question because to me as a human, like Malayalam or Asturian or Nepali would be awesome because other people that want those books could get them for fairly cheap. Um, but like, it's hard because as a collector, if you've spent a lot of money on those yeah, books you and don't want print it, I know. like then you're like, oh man, I just spent a ton of money on that. And they reprinted. However, like I said before, you've probably gotten a good deal on something and you've paid a lot for something else. And so like you can't think about every book. I don't think any of us have paid like full eBay price for every single book in our collection. So you can't – I can't let myself think about that. So right. I think to me, Asturian sticks out just because there are so few copies printed and there are so many people that are starting translation collecting. And I think that's going to be really hard because there aren't that many. What are there, yeah. 300? Uh, no. 600. 600? 600. 700? 700. It's, it's under 1,000. And I mean, to me, that means if more than that many people want to collect book one translations, they're not going to be able to get them. So that's kind of a bummer for me as a human. So I, I would say Asturian, I guess, I think is – one that I'd, I'd like a reprinting of just because it would enable more people to take part in the translation community because yeah. it wouldn't deter you from just being like, I can't get them. So I'm just going to stop. Yeah. That's a nice answer. I mean, I think mine are more like mid tiered books. I would say, um, I would love like Filipino. No, mine. I would think more so are like books that I have in paperback that, exist in hardcover that I'd love to have in hardcover. Like um, the original Mongolian I don't have yeah. in hardcover. And it's just because like either. right now I just can't justify like paying the money for a hardcover when I have the paperback already. Same right. with like Luxembourgish. Like I would right. love to yeah. have that in hardcover. Um, there's another one that I had thought of too. But those those two stick out um, as books that I know exist in hardcover. I'd prefer to have them in hardcover. And I just don't own them in hardcover because I can't, like, justify it with how expensive they would be if I found them. If I even found them. Or um, um, Pharaoh East is another one. Um, in oh, hardcover yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it was reprinted yep. in paperback. It's so easy to find it in paperback. But trying right. to get that book in hardcover is a ghost. That book is a ghost. Right. That's a trip to the Faroe Islands. That's what you have to do. And yeah, and like knocking. knock on doors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, yep. So that's that's a <laughs> and like have like a tray of like cookies or muffins or something. Yeah. It's like, hello, I'm Eric. I'm from the United States. Do you? Can I look at your bookcase? Can I look at your books? <laughs> um. All right. Is this me next here? Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is how many collectors have all 95 translations or transliterations of Philosopher's Stone? That's a good question. Uh, I can. I, I mean, do, are we going to name names here? Because that's how I'm going to have to think about it. I mean, me, you, Carly, Peter. There, four. That's, all right. No, there's definitely more than four. Sean. Sean. Um, okay. I think we have to t- we have to type this out. I think you have to type it out while we're doing right, this. Gotta make a, right, we're making a list on. here. Um, Melanie, Eric, Carly, Peter, Sean. It's Canada. Canada. Sean. Yes. So Sean. Yeah. Potter Sean. Yeah. Um. There's. There's a girl in Poland. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Um, yeah. Who else? Did Jacob at one point? I don't know if he ever did. I think he was missing one. What about that Daniel guy also in Poland? I'm not sure. I know he had all the languages. I don't think he had all the philosopher's stone because he had Malayalam in book two and not book one. So let's say that we know of there's probably about ten. I would say that that we that we know of there there might be more people like that are just not part of like the Potter collector community um, yeah that we don't know about but I would say probably there's like that we know of there's probably about ten yeah and we we were thinking we we typed the list out we know seven for sure mm-hmm. like absolute certainty seven people um 
but there's probably more. But yeah, I mean that we know of under ten, probably. I know there's a couple people that are. It's wild. There's a couple people I know that are really close, like one or two away, and it's like those same one or two that all of us got stuck with for such a long time. I know. It's pretty wild. It is wild. It's crazy to think about. I'm like just sitting here shaking my head because just like thinking like the number 10 in the world like that we know of, like that is not a lot. (laughs) It's not a lot of people. I don't want to do the percentage of that. What is like 10 people out of seven and a half billion? It's crazy. That's a crazy thing. We do a crazy cool thing. It's super crazy. And then the other part of this is that if there were like the internet was not a thing, how would we have any idea? We talked about this with Peter and the first time he was on, like, how would we have any idea that these other people even existed? I know. And then like, how cool is it that like, here we are sitting in the United States, like I'm going to collect Harry Potter book one translations. And then someone in Poland is like, I'm going to collect Harry Potter book one translations. And then Mm -hmm. someone in India is like, I'm going to collect Harry Potter one translations. Like, that's so cool. It is really cool. It's it's so really, cool. Really cool. It's just kind of it's it's global. It's just it's awesome. Our last question is: Why do you all hate the first movie? <laughs> Here's the thing. I feel like the episode that we put out does not do justice to my opinion on the first movie. I do not hate the first movie. I don't hate any of the movies because I feel like they're such a big part of like what we love. Like the movies, regardless, are a huge part of what we do and who we are as people. I love the movies. I actually really enjoy the first movie a lot because I feel like it is very similar to the books. I just feel like we judge it so much now, years and years and years later. Think think about it. That the that movie, movie one, came out 20 years ago. 20 years. We're about to celebrate 20 years of that movie. And... We have to, like, give it a little bit of slack. Like, yeah, the CGI stinks. It's made for kids. It was made for us 20 years ago. I was a little kid when that movie came out, you know? And I feel like I looked at it in a completely different light then than I do now. But I still, like, it's still the nostalgia of it is beautiful. I Well, right. And I, I, the episode that we recorded on this, which you can go back and listen to if you haven't, uh, we all, for that episode, rewatched the first movie as us now in mm-hmm. 2021 and the whole point of that episode was to talk about things that we noticed watching it in 2021 as grown-ups right so we were kind of looking at it in a different way than when we saw it as kids right because like you just said that movie was made for kids so i don't think any of us hate it I think of the three of us, I dislike the movies the most. <laughs> um, but I think that's because I read the books more often than yeah. all three of us. I read the books all the time. I'm always listening to the books on audiobook. So the movies to me are great, but I think I just like the books so much more and that the books have so much more to offer than the movies do. And if if they leave anything out, I'm disappointed. So I don't know if that satisfies your answer. I think that question. I think that did just fine. Okay. Uh, there's one more thing I was going to say about that. Oh, when you said 20 years ago, like the CGI is terrible. The first movie really suffers from like an era of an entire group of movies that take place in a time period where the technology is starting to be good but it's no longer bad. And so it's going to look so dated whenever we watch it, right? I, I watched a movie. I can't remember which one it was. It came out in like 2001 or 2002. And like the people in the movie had pagers. And I'm like, this is just, ugh. Like how long did people have pagers for? In, yeah. It was like a hot three years, right? So it's it's such a time, like a snippet in time. So – yeah, like I think the special effects in this movie and kind of the 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 way that the sets were made, it does feel very dated, but I'm hoping that maybe in another 5 10 years like we'll just kind of appreciate that more like we do with movies that were made in like the late 70s and the 80s. We're like, "Wow, 
Like it's just, it's, we'd see it as like more of a movie, not like trying to hold it to the standards of a movie that was made, you know, last summer. I mean, it's no Avengers Ed game, like in terms no. of special effects, right? No, like, so no, it's but... it's never going to compare to that. So you you can't compare it to a movie that was made recently with technology from you know this era. Yeah. No, I know. I know. It's okay. But yeah. Sum it up. I don't think we could say that we hate the movies, but I don't know. I feel like there are just different opinions on it at this point. I I have to separate them every time. Like I can't. You I just can't have, watch you the have movie to. You can't it. compare them. That's the thing. You no, can't you compare can't. the books and the movies. They're two separate entities completely, and that's that's how you get by with it. That's it. Yep. Because I just like the books so much. That I can't, I can't look at, I can't look at the movie and be like, oh gosh, why is he doing that? He never did that in the book. Well, speaking of books that we like so much, how about we chat about the translation of the show? You have no cards, don't you? For for the for the transitions, for, for I the, do the not. Transitions. I do not. I just have been like catching them like that. Oh man. Oh my gosh. All right. So for the translation of the show for episode thirty four, we're going to talk about another Bosnian book, which is a favorite of ours at the Dialogue Alley podcast. We love the Bosnian books, mm-hmm. and they just came out with Bosnian seven. Pretty recently. So now they have a whole set, one through seven in Boston. I know. I don't have book seven yet. Um, oh, I do. It's awesome. You should get one. I know. I'm pretty sure I'm getting one from Sean. I just have to okay. like I just have to touch base with him because yeah. I just don't have it yet, but I, I have to do that. And if not, you can just go to Buy Book and buy them. Yeah, I it's know. It's pretty easy, right? And Buy Book is the publisher. Uh the translator oh we didn't even say it. the book we're doing is book four, yes. Goblet of Fire in Bosnian. Um so it's it's still by book. It's the same publisher for all seven books. Uh, the translator is Mirjana Evtov. Evtov? Yeah, that's how I would We're trying said our it. best here. Okay. <laughs> um, and if you want to hear more about the Bosnian language, we have Bosnian book one featured on another episode as the translation of the show. So we're not going to go into a lot of detail about the history or general facts about the Bosnian language. Um, but it is spoken in Bosnia and Herzegovina, so there you go. And other countries in the Balkan region of Eastern Europe. That's all you got to know for now. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's it. Uh, short, short I mean, snippet. I, I guess rarity and value. I mean, this book is not rare. It's not worth a lot. You can buy it on the publisher's website. Go get yourself one. It's such a great looking book. It's one of our favorites. Oh, and absolutely. we will tell you why right now. So let's get into our TOTS rating scale. Yes. As always, we're going to smell the book first. And we're on a video chat tonight, so we're going to watch each other smell a book, which is really weird. I know. We're actually – but now it's like proof that we're actually doing it. That's true. Um, did, you take, did you take a picture of that for the <laughs> – <laughs> Wait. Can you take a picture? How do you take a picture of that? Hold on. Uh, got it. Got it. Perfect. It's so funny. Um, it smells fine. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It smells. I would give it. Average. I feel like it doesn't really. Yeah, I would give it an acceptable. I feel like it doesn't really smell like much of anything, to be honest. Yeah, which, that's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Um. No one ever came to my collection. And was like, well, that book's pretty average smelling. I know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you just get those average smelling books and you just got to, you know, um, suck, it happens. It, suck it up, I guess. I mean, I think we've all been by someone that has like bad cologne and good cologne, but it's too much of the good cologne. So like no cologne sometimes is a good answer. Yeah. No, I feel like this is good. Acceptable. Acceptable. Perfect. Uh, size and proportions. This is where... I think according to the Bosnian books, it, they're starting to get a little hefty, right? It's book four. Which. It's a big. 
I mean, to this book's defense, book four gets pretty bulky, like, across any language. Once you get to book four, that's when they start getting chunky. Um, it does. But I, I, I don't think size and proportions, it's still, I, I think it's a good height. It's I love a good it. width. Yeah, and I would give it. as a paperback, it, it. It's good. Don't say it I'm feels gonna... good in your hands. Don't you say it. Don't. I was going to say it feels, but we need a new word. Um, for a thicker paperback book, the experience. proportions of the length, the, the the experience of um, possessing this book in a reading position uh, makes it very pleasant to read. And it only is pleasant because of the size and proportions in which... The and the size and proportions in. alone. And the Correct. size and proportions alone. Um, I give it an, an E for size and I, proportions. Thank I, you, everyone. And thank you. End scene. Um, I, and. Would, <laughs> I would give it a an exceeds expectations as well. I will say, fun fact about this book is, um, so Bosnian came out with books one through three. Um, and then there was quite a break between book three and book four. And yes. once book four came out, it was significantly taller than books one, two, and three. Like, noticeable on my shelves, annoys the daylights out of me. Yeah, well, and then book five, six, seven came out, and they were all the same height exactly, as book four. Exactly, exactly. But they have since re-released books one and two. I'm not sure if they've re-released book three all in that same height. So they have three. They have. Okay, so yep. so you can go back and you can rebuy one, two, and three, and then you will have a beautiful, seamless, all same height set. Nice size yes. and proportions all around. Yep. So and then go. how it feels in my hand. Like when I'm actually holding it in my hands, <laughs> um, I, for a paperback book, I think it feels great. It I like the texture, of the cover. Um, the the cover actually has some different textures on it, like the Harry Potter mm-hmm. movie font thing. You know, it feels a little different. Um, and that's know, something that's something you would find typically on these Bosnian covers. Um, just to kind of like jump around a little bit, is that. Um, you often will find some detail that is done in like a glossy finish, um, whereas the whole book itself is matte. It's a very soft texture. Um, but yeah, the the title and um, author are in a glossy finish, which is really nice. I give this book an outstanding for how it feels in my hands. I just love holding this book. It just feels like this is like such a good book what a good book. yeah like the only the only like thing that i don't like about holding this in my hand is that i can't read it yeah exactly i don't read Bosnia. right <laughs> like, i want to read it because it feels so great so oh, i agree I with you i give it a no i love it outstanding although i just opened to page 258 and cedric diggory's on there and i can read that so oh yeah Ooh. ha and ron i see the word ron and harry yeah oh oh i see harry's name and hermione and Moody, yeah. Oh, so fancy. Yeah. And Malfoy. No, yeah, and Malfoy, just Malfoy. Cedric Diggory. Oh, so cool. What a cool book. Although Fanunculus and Descengio are all are the same, so. That's cool. See, again, like talking about that Spanish book, you don't know what's a made up word and what's a real word. Yeah, I would. Made up. I would not know. I wouldn't know either. Um, the quality of the book. Um. I think, for me, the the spine will definitely crack if you read it. For sure. It's a pretty thin cover overall. It's thin, but it's kind of, like, peely. Like, if you look at it, it, like, I feel like the cover, like, the corner of mine looks like it could peel easily. Um, yeah. I, so I do have some dented corners already, and mine was brand new. I bought it from the publisher. Yep. Like, it came from Bosnia and Herzegovina to my house in Minnesota, and, like, the spine has a little bit of a wrinkle on it. Like, just minute, right? These aren't, like, deal breakers. Yeah. Um, no. But it's a paperback book, right? Like, if you set it down, it's going to affect the... Sure. You always have you know, to be the more the careful with the paperback is just bottom line. Yep, um, exactly. So, I don't know. To me, the overall quality... 
they could have done a hardcover. They didn't. None of the Bosnian books are in hardcover. But Correct. just taking this as a paperback, I still give it an E. I think it's, I think it's done really well. The glue looks great. The spine is nice and crisp. It's going to crease like most paperback books that you read. Um, my Honestly, only complaint is that the cover is kind of peely, like on the edges, and I don't yeah. think it's going to peel. It just feels a little peely. Yeah, exactly. Um, when you're looking at it. I would say, like, my... I, I would give the quality also an E. Um, something that I really do like is, like, the paper quality, I think, is very nice. Um, like, I noticed when, when we, like, stuck our faces into the book, like, it is very smooth paper. I feel like it won't get, like... Um, it's not super porous, so I feel like it won't, like, get greasy with your fingers, like, as you read it. Um, so, yeah, I would... I. I say that like the pros outweigh the cons with it. Um, and yeah, I would, I would agree with that. It's it's hard when there are books in hardcover to like hold a soft cover and be like, wow, this is an O, and like a hardcover yeah. is an O, right? Because I think naturally I tend to gravitate towards hardcover books. If I'm going to buy a book to own, oh, absolutely, I'm buying a hardcover book, and yep, you know, there's no question about that. So. I think just naturally paperbacks are going to be slightly inferior to hardcover books in my personal preference, but that doesn't mean that a paperback book can't still be of good quality, which I think this one is. So Agreed. Good job, Bosnian. Agreed. And my favorite thing about this book is the next is the next thing on our scale. Oh, it's the cover art slash interpretation of uh, cover art? Yeah. This is, if this is, book is not an outstanding, like, I don't know what. No, it, it definitely is. I, I don't know how you could argue that any of the Bosnian books are not, but this one in particular is just pretty amazing. It's definitely out of the whole series. This one is by far my favorite. The color contrast and the choice of colors in this book in particular is so bold and it's just so striking. Um, the teal that's used for, like, I would say, like, the main main highlight color of the book is just the most beautiful, gorgeous, gem-toned teal. That, in high contrast to the deep reds and oranges that are the main color of the book, it's, it's just gorgeous. It's a beautiful book. It is. And this, like... All the Bosnian books, which is hard because you can't really open them all the way, but it's one image across the front, the spine, and yep. the back. And I, man, I wish there was a way that you could kind of just see this as a image without the words on it, kind of like Swedish did that for books one through three. Um, there are the American deluxe editions, like book seven for the American deluxe edition, like you can open it all the way right and that that's true in all the american books actually but this one the color palette's great like you mentioned i think the little graphics of characters we have the dark mark we have the golden eggs we have mad eye moody we have a background of the maze we have the goblet of fire it there's a lot on here but never does it seem like it's overwhelming like it does on maybe like the ukrainian cover where there's just random images put yeah. in random places um just to to fill space. Th this all seems very purposeful and done in a very tasteful way, which is a huge credit to the cover artist which um her name is Alexandra Nina um I think it's Niezevich Niezevich and this cover artist did the same art for all books 1 through 7. So if you want a full set of books that is done by the same artist and is unique to this language, which is something that Melanie and I both really appreciate when you can get unique cover art in addition to a translation, um, pick some of these up because they're awesome. And book four, I think. Melanie, is book four your favorite, definitively? Oh, yeah. Out of out of the seven, book four is by far my favorite. I'm pretty sure in our cover art episode where we were talking about our favorite cover art, this was one of the books that I mentioned. Yes. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I think you are right. So it's good. great. We'll post a picture of this one for sure. Yeah, it's a good one. Anything, anything else? Like overall? 
overall, what would you say? Oh, overall, I would give this book an outstanding. I like yes. I even yep. even when we break down the tots and look at the individual factors, I feel like it's it doesn't necessarily rate as an outstanding. But I would for sure give this book an outstanding. I love. I love, love, this love, is love, one love that you book. would buy if you were like, I don't know how many people are in this situation. If you're on a trip and you found this at a store and you liked Harry Potter, you'd be so excited that you found this book. Oh, yeah. But you don't have to. You can go to buy book and buy it. Yeah. Which I'm literally I'm literally on buy book BA right now. <laughs> really? Yeah. What are you doing? Buy book three? Uh, well, or because book seven? I need I need two, three and seven. So I just want to see oh. how much that's going to cost me. La la la. But the page has to translate to English because it is in Bosnian. 80, 82. So how much is that? 80, 82 in Bosnian. 80, 8. To in Bosnia, and it's like fifty bucks for the three books, plus whatever shipping is going to be. That's not bad. Shipping wasn't bad when I ordered them. My book three is still the old one. Oh, it's total short amount. Well, total amount, I guess, with shipping. Hold on, is one fifty four ninety two. So let's see how much that is. One fifty four ninety two is ninety bucks for the three. It's like ninety. Yeah, so like thirty bucks each. Mm-hmm. I want. Uh, I know, and I could. I can. Um. Uh, Hopefully, I get them from Sean for less. That's my thought. Yeah, but like you'll get them from Sean for less, but he's still making money off you. Yeah, that's that's fine, Sean. That's fine. I don't care. I'm always fine with that. It's Sean. I'll yep. I'll, I'll have to pop him a message. <laughs> you should, because uh, book seven. I think book seven is my favorite. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean the cover. It's gorgeous. Like I've I've looked at it and I've I've seen the cover art for book seven quite a bit. It's very very colorful. It's just. The color palette that's used for book four is definitely... No, like, this honestly reminds me of the um, Dueling Dragons Roller Coaster at Universal before it was Harry yes! Potter. Yes! Right? Yes. And, like, that is so cool. Um, mm-hmm. Because I think just innately, like, fire and ice are such a cool... I love like, it. an so ancient cool. conflict of things. And this just really draws on that for some reason. Yeah, it's Even so though it good. has nothing to do with fire and ice, because, like, the fire is blue, right? So it's, it's, it's really kind of... I know. It's awesome. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Just and then there's like thing. a red dragon, but there's blue fire. Like, oh, it's oh. just so cool. Ooh, you just went all wonky. You turned side. Ah, oh, wonky donkey. I know, but oh, what a good book. Beautiful book. Here's the thing. I don't have a clever transition to get us to the end of the episode. I'm really sorry. I think that's okay. I think that's fine. All right. Well, as long as you think that that's fine, I'm going to go ahead and say that that is all we have time for today. Ah, they kind of did it. All right. Kind of did it. (laughs) If you want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram at the Harry Potter Collection. You can find Eric at Nocturne Eric. That's Nocturne with a K. And Eric also with a K. And it's Nocturne, like Nocturne Alley, just like Harry Potter, because that's what we're all about. Um, I love how, like, you have to explain that, but we're not, we're not like, the Harry Potter, like, the guy in the book and collection, like, you collect stuff about it. <laughs> I know, that's like my, that's my Instagram. Uh, oh my gosh. Did I mention Carly? Because there's also a third member of our podcast. She's just not yeah. here. And her Instagram is at all the pretty books because all of these books they're pretty pretty especially on, book four es- bosnian especially bosnian book four um you can also find this podcast dialogue alley podcast at dialogue alley podcast on instagram and that is where we are going to post pictures of this beautiful bosnian book that we talked about today um you will also find pictures of other books that we've talked about in the past and you'll be able to get to other information and other things that we post and we post questions it's also where you can send us your questions if you have any questions for us um you could also send us questions at our individual instagram accounts that is totally fine too um or you can send us an email at dialoguealleypodcast at gmail.com. That's where you can send us an email. Um, 
And we love getting your emails and we love hearing from you. Another way that you could give us your feedback is by giving us feedback. What? What? I know. On whatever platform you're listening to us on, you could give us feedback. Um, We love reviews. They are super helpful to us as the podcasters to see what you guys think about our podcast. And it's also great for other listeners to see your reviews so they can get a better handle on what they might be listening to. Um, So that is great for us. Leave us a review. Leave us feedback. We would love it. I I Googled our podcast. I Googled Harry Potter podcast and on Google. And you can keep scrolling right on on the search results. Uh, we are the last ones that show up if you scroll like all the way to page four. We're on there, but we are the last entry. So one, that's really great because we're on there. Two, let's move to the second to last spot on that list. So let's get some more reviews in there Yay! to move us a little bit closer Yay, to page reviews. three. Yay, reviews. Yeah, get <laughs> us on there, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, so... Uh, if you are listening to this podcast on any type of platform, you could also mix things up and listen to us on other pa- platforms. We're on Pandora, old school. What? But you Who could... listens to podcasts on Pandora? Well, you might. You might. You never know. If you're listening to us on Pandora, hey there. Hey, we're saying this is a high just for you. <laughs> just for just you. Just for you. But you could also listen to us on Apple, Google, Spotify, Audible, really cool. You can ask your Alexa to play Dialogue Alley podcast for you, and she will do it as if by magic. It's pretty wonderful. Uh, I am going to go ahead and say it. We did this whole episode, and there was not a single dad joke of the show. No, but you know what? I was just so astonished by the amazing transitions that you put forth that it just kind of wiped my brain clean (laughs) every segment that started. I had something stewing in my mind, and I was like, you know what? I I had to start over because I can't top that. Just pure, (laughs) flawless transition. Oh, man. No jingles for you this time, guys. But stay tuned for the next episode because maybe there will be a dad joke of the show in that one. (laughs) We'll just have like a bonus episode of 10 minutes of me reading horrible dad jokes. Oh, my gosh. And we'll just we'll throw that out there. (laughs) Yeah, stay tuned, everybody. Now, with that being said, it is time to walk back the archway and into your daily lives we will catch you next time bye everyone see ya